Hey guys, I'm here today with Natalie Palomino from Shop North Authentic <laughs> Hair Care, and I'm so excited because we are doing a hair tutorial and consultation. So I've always had this picture actually saved on Pinterest that she sent me that she thought would be good for my hair. And we're just gonna go through it, talk through some hair questions and get started. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Haley. It's been so great watching you um, through your Instagram. But um, yeah, I definitely want to be here to answer any questions that you have. Um, so yeah, go ahead, where should we start? So I'd love to start with just how to prep my hair for something that's going to be a little bit wavy, but also have volume with it because my hair, this is, I've blown, it was like partially air dried and then I blow dried the second half of it mm -hmm. and I probably am ready for a trim soon. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it's a little bit puffier, but that's kind of what I need help with. <laughs> got it. No, got it. So it looks like you have kind of like a blunt one length. Is that right? Like mm -hmm. you have a whole lot of layers in there. Yeah, it's usually pretty blunt. And then this is like leftover trimmings from my wedding haircut. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> okay, perfect. So do you have, um, I can kind of tell you have fine hair, um, yeah. but you look like you have a decent, like a medium amount of it. Do you feel like you have like fine hair and you have a good amount of it? Or do you feel like it's kind of, you have a little bit less than or less to medium? In the last few years, I've it's thickened up a little bit, but it's like fine, oh. but it's still like when I put it in a ponytail, it's little. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so what I can tell about your hair is it looks like it's really soft, right? And mm -hmm. um, I've always told my clients that have this type of hair too, and I, I don't know another way to describe it, but I'm like, it sits close to your head. So yeah. like it sit very flat, right? So someone like you, like if you wanted to get extensions, it would be really hard to make it so that you couldn't see them unless they were very, very low on your head. So you really yeah. couldn't do like, you know, you couldn't go from your length down to, you know, 20 inches or something because we'd have to do multiple rows and your hair would show everything. So, um, so what you want to do mostly is especially with the picture I sent you, which is um, hopefully you'll be able to like kind of share that in this um, consultation is it just looks like it has a little bit more texture and body to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's what something I wanted to show you with because I could tell that your hair is fine and you do have a one length and for your type of hair that's that's good because um, when you have fine hair and you don't have a whole lot of it, you want to make sure that your your ends stay nice and thick looking like you do have a lot. Um, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, without layers and stuff like that, it's hard to create body unless you create texture using a styling product. So, yes. um, so that's, what's really important is you want to make sure you're using the right products. Um, so number one, um, when you get out of the shower, um, you should be using always, always some sort of leave-in product with heat protection in it. Um, so I always say like, uh, someone like you, you probably don't want anything that's too heavy because it's mm -hmm. going to make your hair feel oily and probably weight yeah. down, right? So you want like kind of more of a water-based leave-in product rather than an oil-based leave-in product and um forgive me if i can't remember what what did you get on the test like what was your initial leave-in so received? i actually have a few of them with me right here oh cool so i have the flux potion that is yeah and hair the tonic all and all. yeah they're perfect so good i also I pulled the desert dry Perfect. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything you need. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Those are like three of my favorite products for fine haired girls. So it's great because I created the quiz, like you were sitting in my chair and I'm kind of telling you what I would want you to use. And I'm always so excited when I'm like, yeah, the quiz nailed it every time. Like I created it, but sometimes you're like, wait, I might've changed that. But when it's like a hundred percent every time, it's so, it makes me so happy. So yeah. the tonic is a very, lightweight leave-in with a lot of heat protection in it, 100% clean. I love it. It's by Colton King. So when you first get out of the shower, you're going to want to spray that tonic. Um, it's a hair and a scalp purifier and a healthy scalp means healthy hair and healthy growth. So you want to spray it on your scalp first and then kind of spray it a little bit throughout your hair and then always comb it through. Um, we have these tangle teaser um, detangler brushes you could comb it through with that are anti-breakage that are awesome. Or you could use like a comb or a wet brush, whatever you have. So you're going to brush that through first. And then the flux potion, what's awesome about the flux potion is it 
it like creates more space for your hair. So if your hair is fine and you want it to just kind of create, literally create more space, it leaves these little kind of molecules on the hair that actually makes your hair kind of thicken, um, but it still is very brushable. So some volumizing products can create a lot of sticky texture so that your hair kind of sits on top of these little, almost like little knots in your hair because it's creating this texture and that's what creates volume. But if you want something that's still really movable and brushable, um, Flux Potion is awesome because your hair is still very soft, but it's just like, woo, you know, awesome. Yeah. So you're going to apply your flux potion pretty much from roots to ends and okay. um, you have fine hair. So do just what it says. I think it says like a dime or a quarter amount, put that in your hands, emulsify it in your hands before you put it through your hair and you're always going to use less product. After that, um, I would say for you to start blow dry your hair upside down, like create as much yeah. volume as possible. And I'm sure that is that what you do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Really like it's like to my head. Yeah, no, for sure. That's, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, there's, you know, there's good sides and bad sides to every hair texture. Like I need to put all kinds of shine and stuff to control my hair because I have a lot of body, but I also have a lot of frizz, you know? So what's good about you is you can probably walk out the door with your hair wet and it'll still probably look fine. Like you won't look crazy. Like you put your finger in an electric socket. Like I would, if I did that. So, <laughs> so there's, you know, there's always good sides and bad sides at the same point. Anyway, so yeah, you're gonna blow dry your hair upside down. And I tell people when you already have soft, fine hair like yours, there's really no reason to take a brush to it while you're blowing it out. Like if you have a round brush or anything, just like use your hands and just really yeah. get it as dry as possible. And then um, you're gonna wanna use for your length of hair, like a one and a quarter inch curling iron. So okay. do you have a curling iron or do you have a flat iron? Either one. Both. I have. A couple wands and then I have I think it's a little bit thicker I think it's like I don't know it's probably like a one inch but I know I need to put a different size and then I a this iron. is the one and a quarter inch can okay. you tell? I should probably grab a one inch curling iron and show you that next to this but it literally is like totally skinnier um uh, I should probably show you the sizes but yeah I mean if you can look at the barrel of it this is a, it's like a medium sized curling iron. And this yep. is the best friend for your length of hair. hundred percent. This honestly is even what I used to curl my hair this size. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so any tinier is going to create too tight of a curl. Um, yeah, like yeah. Like tendrils, which is a cute if you want to achieve that look, but if you want to achieve this kind of messy textured lob look like we have in the picture, you're going to want to use something a little bit bigger. Um, a one and a half inch is too big. And um, that's for, say, if I wanted my hair long, but I wanted very big waves where those waves are, you know, for some people, it won't even look like I curled it later. For me, my hair holds curl really well. So I'll have just big waves. But for something like this, you want to use a one and a quarter inch. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. So the big part is about this hair um, look is I want you to break up your hair into sections. So tell me how you curl your hair right now when you're curling it. Let me let me go through that first. Um, and then I'll, I'll kind of tell you what I might want you to change up. Okay, so I'll usually split it in half, just okay. like the top, wrap it up and I'll do it in sections. Okay. And I usually split from, like I curl away from my face. Mm -hmm. If it's my straightener, I'll usually, I try to mix it up a little bit if I'm wanting like a wavier, more textured look, but if I'm using my curling iron, I'll usually start from the top, pull it down and then like curl it up. Um, sometimes I've just, yeah, I probably need a little more direction on how I curl because <laughs> no it's a wavy look because sometimes it's too curly and too tight, even if I brush it out like that. Okay. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, so depending on how much wave you want to see, which with your length of hair and a lob to have it a little bit more wavy can look really cute. Um, but for the look we're trying to achieve, you want it to look almost like, yeah, like you air dry with just a slight wave to your hair. So the whole thing is just to look like we didn't spend a lot of time, right? The whole goal is to be like, oh my God, I wake up like this. This is just my hair, right? So, <laughs> so what you want to do always with your curling iron is yes, divide it into three sections, start at the bottom first, 
Um, I'm going to show you just using this top area of my hair, like kind of actually I have a fringe. So let me get him out of the way. I'll show you on some hair that's a little bit more back here. So what you want to do is you always want to start higher up on your hair. So I always say grab like a square inch section. So you don't want to grab more than that. And you don't want to grab too much less than that because less is going to make you have a lot more curls in your hair. And we want it to look like almost all of your hair is in like kind of a big bend. Um, yep. And too much means that it's just not going to hold because if you have too much hair in your curling iron, the heat's not dispersing to all the hair in your iron enough. It's kind of only getting the outside hair and the inside hair is kind of just going to fall flat on you. So I would say square inch is the best. So I always say like, you wanna kind of use the heat. This isn't on, so just caveat, but you just want to <laughs> I don't have a plug near me. I usually kind of heat up and smooth out my hair with a little bit of heat. And then you wanna start, I can kind of see it in my little picture, start mm -hmm. higher up. Okay. okay. And then I kind of actually pull that out and then, oops, sorry, I'm doing it wrong. Hold on. <laughs> it's hard for me to see in here. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm actually gonna kind of unwind it and do a little bit more. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to let it go and I am immediately going to tug it. Okay. So I'm tugging it down. And so I'm not running my fingers through it and I'm not brushing it out, but I'm yeah. tugging it. And what you can tell is that it actually takes what would be kind of a tighter, I should have this plugged in so you can see it, what would look like a tighter curl that would look like mm -hmm. this. If I wanted yeah. it to stay that curly, I would kind of leave it like that and it would be a lot more curlier. And then I'd wait for it to cool and brush it out. I don't yeah. want it to be that tight. So I'm gonna give it a little tug and kind of let it kind of cool with that bare, barely bend in it. And so I'm gonna do that going back. Of course, around my face, I always say curl away. And then after that, that messy look, it's always better to change directions because if you look at a girl who has naturally curly hair, her waves are every which way, right? It's not like all the curls are curled one direction. So that's when it looks really contrived. So then you wanna take the next section behind that and you're gonna to wanna to curl that towards your face and then okay. again, back and forth. Um, for this look, I generally recommend doing a, a not doing the wand wrap curl where you're gonna kind of do this kind of guy because that's gonna create much more of a way, like a curly wave, like a spindle kind of a curly wave, tendril. Um, where this is really just creating a soft wave to it um, that isn't going to look so much like a like a hard curl. Yeah. So that's what you're going to do going all the way around your head. Um, and then what I want you to do after that is you're going to, um, do you have a wide tooth comb? Yes. Okay, perfect. So at that point, I want you to kind of brush your hair through and then the desert dry spray I say that's like a Victoria's Secret. It's like Victoria's Secret hair in a can. Like it's, it turns like your waves like this. You spray it and suddenly you're just like, oh my God, it's like a fan's on you. And you're walking into a room like Beyonce. Like it literally is my favorite product in the whole world for creating body. <laughs> that's good. Oh my God, right? So you're going to spray that kind of underneath and all throughout your hair. And then I want you to even like kind of concentrate a little bit at your root, just because your hair does want to sit a little bit flatter down here. And the last yeah. thing we want with a one length is for you to get like that upside down V, right? So we want to make sure you have some body up here. So spray it a little bit more towards your root, but also get your ends. And then you're going to be able to really achieve that real fun kind of more textured look. So just curl your hair, make sure you're using the right size, which is the one and a quarter inch curling iron. Um, tug, tug, tug on each curl so that it has a little bit more of a big wave opposed to sticking inside of the position that it was when you first let it go. And mm -hmm. then comb it through with a wide tooth comb and hit it with your desert dry volumizing spray after. And then you should have a really awesome kind of more textury look. That desert dry is what's going to give you that textured look um, that you don't have by uh, just basically having layers in your haircut. So yeah. So I can't wait to see you do the how-to video. I can't wait to see how that works. So just do you have any questions? Does that seem kind of clear? Yes. I think my big mistake has been a not switching directions enough. Mm -hmm. and then doing it like too tight or I would sometimes not let it sit long enough brush it out with my comb and then it would be like so flat oh so. yeah I tell people like um oh first I'll tell you I'll tell you two things so first um 
if we gave you a hairspray, I don't know if you had a hairspray, but after you um, have tugged it and you're letting it cool before even the desert dry, hit it with like a light hairspray and literally just walk away. Go make your coffee, go put on your makeup, like literally try to let it cool as long as possible. It's almost like it needs to set. Like the heat kind of helps manipulate it, but when it cools off is when it's like staying in that position. So mm -hmm. if you feel any warmth in your hair still, don't touch it. Leave okay. it until it literally is like completely cooled off and then you can brush it through and it's gonna hold a lot better. Um, the other thing is I noticed that a lot of people who curl their hair, they'll take the section and they'll go all the way down to the end and then they'll start curling like this. Yeah. So what that's gonna do is there's multiple things wrong with that type of curl first it's going to end up looking really flat up here and only curled on the ends which mm -hmm. for is the last thing we want because then we're still creating flatness here and width here which we don't want to do right um and we want the waves to start higher so that it looks truly like kind of like a sexy wave going all the way down yeah the other thing is is this hair that's like new at the top. This is brand new hair. It is the strongest hair on your head. This yeah. hair down here, funny post somebody put up a while ago where it's like, this hair's seen some stuff, you know? Like this hair's been through it. Like it's yeah. been colored. It's had a hot iron on it a million times. You know, it's been brushed through. Like, you know, it's just been through some stuff. Okay, so this hair is a little bit more fragile. Like it might not be fragile, but it, it's it's, a little bit more damage just because we do damage our hair. Um, so applying heat here first is like the last thing you want to do. That's going to enhance more split ends. That's going to create more dryness on your ends. It's going to, yeah, just fry your ends that are already like kind of like eh, trying to survive and hold on. So you want to start curl at the strongest point at the top and you're leaving this hair kind of hanging out can't see where he is kind of hanging out and he's going to get hit. Like literally I can either unwrap it or I can just cool it and carry it out. And I'm going to hit those ends for like a second and drop it. And then I'm okay. going to tug, tug, tug. So start your curl always higher up on your section as well. And try to hit your ends for like a second or two max two If your hair is like thick and your ends are pretty healthy, but for yeah. some finer hair, like literally a second and drop it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Too. Yeah. Also for that look is you could tell on her ends, they're not curled. So yeah. there's kind of a debate that like curling your ends, <laughs> there's a big debate. Everybody's yeah. torn up about this, but no, <laughs> but it's like, are you going to curl your ends all the way down to the bottom? Because if you curl your ends, that's considered kind of like dated and dorky. So yeah. what you do want to do is take your section, curl that top first, and then you're literally gonna, sometimes you could just leave your ends out straight. My ends need a little heat because they're a little sad because I just have frizzy or dry hair. For someone like you, you could literally leave your straight ends out and just drop it then and create a tug tug mm -hmm. because it, in order for it to look textured and cool, your ends really shouldn't have any wave to it. It should be kind of almost like a bend with a little bit of straightness on the bottom. Yep. So when you're curling your hair, I want you to almost not touch your ends at all. Or if you do, you could kind of touch them for a second like that. So it's smoothing down any, I don't think you have frizz, but say if your followers do, that will smooth down your ends a little bit, still keep them looking kind of straight. And that's more of an edgier wave than curling it all the way down the ends. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see your video, but did you have any other questions on just like, the steps of the hair care regimen or any questions you've ever run into about your hair? I think I'm good on the tutorial. I'm really excited. I'm probably gonna go downstairs and try it after this. Um, but I've always had an oily scalp and my goal during quarantine has been, how can I change my scalp, wash less? Cause I'm the person that wants to get up in the morning, wash my hair yeah. every single morning. Yeah. And I'm trying so hard to not have to wash my hair every day, but since it's, you know, thin and flat, yeah. it just gets oilier, it feels like during the day. So do you have, like once my hair gets kind of through its new cycle, how mm -hmm. often would you recommend I wash it? Um, so because you have fine hair and someone with fine baby soft hair, there's some people that literally I have clients where I can't even touch their hair with my fingers after I've, after I've blown them out 
because just my, the oil for my fingers and my fingers are like in shampoo bowls all day. So I don't have a lot of oils in my finger, uh, on my fingers by like the end of a day of styling hair, but there's just, just that alone makes their hair look greasy. So yeah. I know that how you have to be very picky with what products you're using when you have that type of hair. Um, mm -hmm. So what you want to do, um, have you noticed a difference already with washing your hair not every day? Yes. It, well, and it's been a couple months and then I incorporated the replumping shampoo. Cool. And, it, and I can tell like, I can go, since I'm working from home, I can go till even the afternoon and take a lunch break and shower then. And I feel so much better because I can get up in the morning and save some time and my hair is much more manageable. Okay, good. Are you still washing your hair every day? Yes. There's a few days here and there where I'll just go all day and I won't wash it, but I awesome. still do days. It's just, I can go a little bit longer now. Okay, good. Okay. So I have two options for you actually. So the replumping is actually great for fine hair when you need body, but because your hair is um, soft and sits flat, there's actually another shampoo that might be better for you. So when you're done with your replumping, because replumping creates thicker hair, um, yeah. but it still moisturizes and you may not need that additional moisture. So there's um, a shampoo we have by Evolve called Insta Volume. That is only for people like you who have very soft, fine hair and you actually mm -hmm. need texture to create volume. Yeah. Um, so, cause there's a lot of people who have dry hair, frizzy hair, other issues, but their hair sits flat. So if they use this, it would be no good for them. But for you, it's awesome. Um, it's it's an actual all-in-one treatment. So it's shampoo and conditioner in one. So you don't have to use a conditioner after it. Um, so this, this only is, let me caveat, caveat this, is that you're only gonna wanna use the shampoo if you can actually get used to washing your hair at least every other day. Yeah. Every other day, I think is already like a year to you because you're used to washing your hair every day, right? So if you can get to every other day, I'm so proud, that's awesome. So that should make a huge difference um, using that because it's not adding any moisture um, and it's creating a little bit more texture. And it because it creates a little bit more volume and texture, your hair's not gonna sit as flat to your scalp because when it sits flat to your scalp, your oils are able to access it a lot quicker because we're naturally creating it's called sebum, which is also just the technical word for our natural oils in our hair. Well, it has, it's very quick for the oil to get through to every strand of your hair that you can see because your hair's sitting really flat to your head and it's fine. So it's just absorbing everything really quickly. So when we're washing our hair every day, we're over drying the scalp. We're not allowing those natural oils to come out. So then what it does is it starts to create more and more oil. Mm -hmm. so that's why we say this whole thing. I don't know if what you're doing right now, you're calling it oil training. It's called oil training. It's for people who wash their hair every day and mm -hmm. you're, and you're going to have like withdrawal syndrome, right? As you're trying yeah. to not wash your hair, um, for like start, started a day and a half instead of like two days altogether, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, but your hair is going to actually create less oil and you're not going to feel as oily after two days. You might look after two days, the way you used to look after a day once you actually get yourself through this. So I see that you're washing your hair later in the day. I'd like to, to say to do is if you wash your hair in the afternoon, try not to wash it the next afternoon. Maybe try to wash next night. Yeah. Or even morning. So you're getting almost like a day and a half in yeah. and try to see if you can manage that. But I understand there's a lot of people who are like, I tried it. It's not working for me. I, I'm never going to do this. Like I'm just not, and I get that. That's okay. So there is a shampoo for those people. So Davines makes a shampoo called Didi, D-E-D-E. -E. Um, mm -hmm. Shampoo and conditioner. It is only for, again, you're specific. You're not a specific case. There's many, many people like you. And I have a lot of clients like you, but it's a specific type of hair and a specific type of person. And I generally do feel like it does happen with a lot of blondes with fine hair for sure, because you can just see the grease more, especially if your regrowth is coming out. Um, yeah. so it is very, very high in antioxidants and minerals and everything that you are depleting out of your hair when you wash it before your sebum can make its way down your hair to give it its moisture and everything that your body's naturally trying to give your hair health, yeah. right? Um, oh, so 
So it's full of all that stuff and it has cleanser in it, but it's just a baby bit. So it's kind of like washing what little you need to wash your hair at that point, because at one day you really don't need to wash it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also giving your hair all that yumminess that your hair needs. Yeah. So if you are never able to break away from the daily washing, that's okay. But I would say for us to switch you to DD shampoo and conditioner because yeah. of that, because then your hair is going to get all that nutrients it needs. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> you're like, yeah, have a way out of this. Okay. Forget it. You're the whole hair You're like, I'll buy DD right now. <laughs> I'm determined to get through this like a cycle to break it so that I don't have to wash it so much. No, that's but it's like a it's kind of a lot. I mean, it's it's a lot on your hair to wash it every day because again, mm -hmm. you're depleting the natural oils from making its way down your hair strand and like giving your hair just what naturally your body's trying to give to it to keep it healthy. But also then you unless you can air dry your hair every day, I don't know how often you're blowing it out or hitting it with the mm -hmm. iron so that it looks cute. So when you're wetting it down, you gotta kind of start all over again to style it, right? So you're just putting your hair through more than it needs to be put through when you wash daily. So um yeah. But, you know, again, uh, I'm not going to fault anybody who feels like they absolutely have to do it because now, thank God, there's a product that does it. Yeah. I also have a shampoo called um, Rebalancing Shampoo that for people who are producing a lot of oil, it actually will rebalance their scalp pH and have their body like create less oil. But I would say that's somebody who's like chronically oily, like chronically. If you are... Um, trying to do oil training, you probably won't need it if you start to see a difference. But if yeah. you're somebody like, I wash every two or three days and I still like, I'm in an oil pit within 24 hours and I've been trying to do this for a year, then I'm like, you need rebalancing shampoo. It's just, there's no way around it. It's, you kind of need help at that point because your body just produces excess oil, which is going to yeah. mean you're going to stay looking young longer. You know, the oilier your skin is, the, the younger you're going to look longer, right? Because you're constantly getting hydration. So your scalp's nice and young, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's also can be kind of annoying. So yeah. Cool. So any other questions, anything else you're um, battling with? I think that's like my major problem right now. Cause I'm not since I'm working from home, I can let my hair air dry more often, but yeah, that's just like my major problem. And then of course, which we already covered. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, your hair, like you look like you have a cute little bend. And if this is air dried, is this air dried? Mm -hmm. Well, it's mostly air dried and then blow dried like at the very end, just cause it was cold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Well, then I would just say still put in your your tonic like before you mm -hmm. air dry. You could even probably put in a little bit of flux potion and mm -hmm. then let it air dry. And then you can still use your desert dry volume spray just on your, you know, even when you are back at work and going to work because you have a cute bend. Like your hair doesn't look like, you know, you really need to use the curling iron, the blow dryer, really. Um, mm -hmm. So you can get away with using those products to give yourself a little bit more lift and stuff without having to really use a hot tool. So that's awesome. I mean, that's a really good thing about your hair. <laughs> yes, thank goodness. It's like real wavy underneath. It's so weird. It's like the top layer of my hair is straighter. And then when you get to the back underneath, it's like some days curly. So weird. I always tell people like when you have curly hair, or wavy hair, it's always a lot curlier and wavier under here. But the reason is to me is it's so protected under there, right? The sun's not beating on it. When we do yep. get highlights, we're not really, a lot of people will get partials forever. And I'm like, oh my gosh, please do a full once a year. Cause I can't stand when I see blonde sitting on top of dark hair. But um, it's like, you're not doing as much to it. It's not exposed to pollution and stuff as much. And you're not probably spending as much time with the blow dryer and stuff under there. And it, it's like kind of dark and, and more moisture. And it's just, it's kind of, it's the healthiest hair on your head, really, is the hair that's back under here. And so that's when you see like your true curl pattern, because your curls need like a lot of health um, and safety in order to thrive. Because the more you bleach your hair and color your hair, the more people with curly hair will see that their waves start to kind of weaken. So this probably is how wavy your hair actually would be. Um, mm -hmm. But once you're, now that you're doing all these other treatments, like your olaplexes and stuff, you'll probably start to see a little bit of your wave come back, even on the top. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Then that'd make my hair even easier. 
<laughs> Yay, I know. Then you can really just let it air dry and you're out the door. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, if you don't have any more questions, then yeah, um, I guess that's it. But um, yeah, if you have anything ever, just always, we have a chat bot and we always say like for our customers, you can ask questions even while you're shopping and ask like, hey, is this for fine hair or whatever? But every single um, page on our website has filters on the side. So if you have fine hair that's frizzy and maybe you have some hair loss or anything like that, you can actually choose the issues that you're having as well as the hair goals you have. And then it'll spit out the exact right products for you. You can even put if you're like allergic to nuts in there and it'll spit out nut free products. So I tried to make it the easiest shopping experience ever because I feel like when people right now go shopping, they're walking to like a big box store and there's just aisles and aisles of hair product. And you're like, I have no idea which of these are right for me. Um, yeah. So I tried to make it really easy for people just to get in and get out with the right stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. So much easier. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Haley. Well, thanks for doing the consultation today. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see your how-to video with you um, putting together the, the style we just discussed. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thanks for sitting here and talking with me and taking me through everything. I'm seriously going to recommend like all my family and friends to go check out the website and like filter it out for their hair problems. Yeah, 100%. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'm so excited. It was so great to meet you. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing your video. Yeah, thanks. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Bye.